Oh, oh, God, Annie. Well, oh, well. <laughs> la di da, la di da, la la, yeah. In 1977, Woody Allen's Annie Hall swept the Academy Awards. But the film didn't only win Oscars, it won hearts as well, becoming an instant American classic. Some may now associate Allen with his later pictures, with Rome or with Paris, but Annie Hall is something special, a perfect mix of romance and comedy, of neurosis and eccentricity that's almost as endearing as Woody Allen himself. The film follows Alvy Singer, a seemingly autobiographical character played by Alvy himself. Alvy is a stand-up comic and television writer, just as Alan was before making it in the film industry. For cheating on my metaphysics final, you know, I looked within the soul of the boy sitting next to me. He's neurotic, obsessed with death, afraid of driving, convinced that everyone around him not is an anti-Semite, and yet Jew? utterly no, not did you eat, but Jew eat, Jew, you get it? The film chronicles Alvy's romance with Annie Hall, a small-town girl from Wisconsin who, amazingly, has just as many quirks as Alvy himself. She wears men's attire, has dreams of becoming a nightclub singer, and uses phrases like la-di-da. Annie is played by Diane Keaton, who won an Academy Award for the role. Annie Hall is a lovely romance, an in-depth character study of not merely individuals, but a relationship as a whole. But what brings me back to Annie Hall again and again is Alan's playful experimentation with style. He picks not just one style, but experiments with dozens throughout the film. For example, in one scene, subtitles let the viewers see what the characters are really thinking. In another, Alan appears in his own flashback. Six-year-old boys don't have girls on their minds. I did. For God's sake, Savvy, every Floyd speaks of a latency period. Whether it's hyperbole, Alan remembers his childhood home as being literally underneath a roller coaster, or direct discourse with the camera. What do you do when you get stuck on a movie line with a guy like this behind you? Wait a minute, why can't it's I just give my maddening. opinion? These whimsical stylistic elements are placed at intervals throughout the film, distinguishing it within the tried and true romantic comedy genre. Yet, because he uses each of these stylistic choices only once or twice throughout the film, it is prevented from feeling absurdist. It merely feels personal, as close as the film can get to being told in the first person. And, of course, there's that wonderful Woody Allen humor. Drew was originally a stand-up comic, and Annie Hall was his first divergence from screwball comedies like Bananas and Sleeper. Yet Annie Hall becomes before Allen's move to Europe, with films like Match Point and Vicky Cristina Barcelona. In the 1970s, Woody Allen was almost synonymous with New York. Allen's New York is certainly not a universal New York. It's an upper-class New York, an intellectual New York, but it is a beloved New York. Allen's films of this time period, Annie Hall, Manhattan, Hannah and Her Sisters, are odes to New York. We not only understand how much Allen loves his city, but we come to love it too. Woody Allen is one of modern cinema's great auteurs. He is a comic, a philosopher, a poet, and in fact, even a wonderful clarinetist. Though there are many of his films to love, there's something delightful about Annie Hall. It's Alan at his truest and at his best. Back to you in the studio.